Well, welcome back. 2005 Chevy Suburban. It's mine. Just did an O2 sensor in it. Uh, gauges have been, uh, except for my uh, speedometer, not working really well. My fuel tank's been working okay. So there's like there's six gauges in it. Uh, it's a common issue uh, with the GMC Chevy series of trucks where the stepping motors go bad uh, and then the gauges don't work right. So I'm gonna take a look at it. I'm gonna pull it out. Put new stepping motors in it and uh, hopefully fix this issue. Got my instrument panel here, instrument cluster. Um, tax not working. Oil pressure's not working. Temperature's not working. Voltmeter's working. And the speedometer's working. Everything else, all the gauges aren't working. So I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to put new stepping motors in it. And fix this. Uh, I'm not having any problems with any other displays. The Prindle's fine, the odometer reading, all that works fine, no issues. I don't have any lights that are out. Um, just uh, one, two, three, four out of six gauges don't work. I don't think this is very difficult to get apart. Hopefully, you'll be able to see this. Uh, this bezel should just pop off of here, I believe. Corner. Just carefully kind of work around it here. I probably have to drop my shift lever here. Tilt my wheel all the way down. Just pops out of there. Turn my blinker on. My hazards. Move that out of the way. Let's see what we got to deal with here. Seven millimeter. My guess is that's annoying. Uh, four, one, two, three, four. You go get a seven millimeter. Okay. Well, this one is coming out. It was just kind of hung up on the edge of the plastic. There we go. All right, I only dropped one. One out of four. That's about average. Put this uh, shift lever down again. Get it out of my way. Probably should. I don't know why my, my hazards are suddenly going off, but they are. out. Ah, there we go. Just had the hazard to run. All right. Let's go take this over to the bench. Take it apart. Put some new stepping motors in it. Sounds like fun. All right. Let's just uh, get this thing apart here. Figure out how to do that. Shouldn't be that hard, I wouldn't think. No. Nope. No. Three. What else do we have here? Oh yeah. The back half of it looks like. Side. All right, 
So these two little tabs at the bottom, what I did was just unclip the, kind of unclip the top three and kind of take this and push it that way. They just slide into a clip. They slid, kept, came right undone. Didn't break them. That's good. Um, I'm going to put the back on this temporarily that I took off already. At least set it on it because I'd rather not set the board down on that. And, uh... All right, so I'm doing this after I had it back in the truck because I forgot to do something, which is kind of dumb. So these have a sweep to them. You sweep them all the way down to their resting position. And then before you take them off, mark that position with a piece of tape or take a picture. I, I think marking it with a piece of tape is probably better. Just mark that position. I didn't do that. I have a scanner and I could look at my scan data and see how much I was off. And I was pretty close except for this one. Um, but I have to now adjust them all. Because I wrote down how far I'm off on each one of them. I have to pull them out, adjust them, put them back. But do that first. Mark your, your resting position. And then when you put them back, put it, the new ones in and set the needles again. Set them right back to where you marked. That way you'll be exactly where you uh, started from and you won't have to adjust them. Just kind of sit it in here for a minute. i got to pop these off of here. So it should pop right off of here. Should I say that? There they do. There you go. And get my tray out so I don't lose any of these. Stick them in my tray. It doesn't feel good. Yeah. Then. breaking any of them. Like I said, none of my bulbs are burned out, so I'm not touching them. Um, you could, but these are what I'm interested in. And these are the old style, original ones. Uh, let me find the new ones here, had them out. Yep. So, these are the uh, X27-168. Supposed to be uh, the updated ones, from what I understand. I'm no expert on it, so uh, let me get this out of the tray here, now that I've put it back in. Okay. Let's set it down, and I'm going to unsolder them. Let me find them. Here's one right here. There's my pin. Here, so let's see what we got here. Two pins, four pins. So there's four pins. So looks like this. So one, two, three, four. I don't know how far away you are or what the light is like. Let me zoom you in. Let me get my soldering gun set up and uh, zoom you in here. One, two. Three, four, right there. Yep. I'm just going to do one of these, show you. Key is to get the, you want to get the solder out of these around the pin here. I don't know how hot my gun is yet. It's getting there. Somebody might have bent these pins a little bit when they put them in. Maybe the factory does it, I don't know. Solder sucker going here.
not quite there. Don't want to push on them and break them or tear them up. Take your time. Oh yeah, there we go. So, just a little bit of wiggle came right out of there. Don't want to pull them out. Don't want to tear the pads up on the on the board. That's it, right there. Just carefully push it back on. I can resolder these. This would be nice to have a magnifying glass that I didn't have to hold. Didn't take very much. Let me take a look at that. nice actually looks really good all right so obviously I've got to do that for the other five I'm not going to show you that but I have five more to go and then I'm going to come in here with some alcohol just clean these up when I'm done clean them up after I do all of them and then we'll go test it see how it works I'll be back when I'm done all right there they are well five or six of them all six of them out Took me probably 20, 30 minutes, not that hard. Somebody who does this all the time, probably take them five minutes and they're done. But um, I've got to put my needles back in, but I've put my back half back together. I cleaned it with alcohol after I was done, just to make sure it was clean. I was looking at it with magnifying glass to make sure everything looked good. I'm just going to put my needles back on here and um, carefully, which ought to be fun. I'm trying to see what I'm doing here. small shaft you're gonna get right on it Just push them back on well we'll see we have to adjust them when we're done but with it see if I can cycle them see if they'll recalibrate themselves because I really don't know I'm gonna find out I'm sure there's a test to do it You'd think they'd be hard to get on there, but they're not very hard to get on there. I should have said that after my last one. Okay. Uh, they're all on. Whether or not they're right, in the exact right position, I don't know. I'm going to leave that off. I'm just going to go put this, hook this back up, and uh, let's see what it does. Let's turn it on. Saw that one move a little bit, which is good. Oil pressure's good. Fuel tank, that's that should be just about right. And then my temperature should move up slowly here. Voltage looks good, everything looks good. They actually work. 
obviously I'll take this out and drive it make sure this goes but it did move initially and this one wasn't broken but it's been replaced it did move initially when I turned the key on and I expect that it'll work fine and I'll check it but we'll put the, the uh, cover back on this put everything back together and that's it replaced all six of the stepper motors well that's it for the 2005 Chevy uh, gauges instrument cluster uh, it's working well now I did one mistake which was I should have moved all the needles to the rest position when I pulled it out and marked them with a piece of tape and when you put the new ones in put them back right to that same spot and then you don't have to guess at where they should be I have a scanner so I was able to look at this scan data and I had to pull it out again and reset everything basically I was close on most of them but they were a little bit off so I had to fix them but just mark it in the rest position on the face of the dials with a piece of tape before you pull it apart, before you pull the needles off, and then you won't have to do that. But pretty easy. Uh, not Definitely not something I do all the time. It's the first time I've ever done one of these. It took me probably half an hour to actually solder, unsolder and solder uh, new ones on there. You know, somebody who does this all the time, it's probably five or ten minutes for them. But uh, not very hard if you have the right equipment. I have an electronic solder, which is the right temperature, and I have a solder sucker, which is you have to clean that solder out. You do not want to pull them off the board and damage the board. But there's some other common issues where uh, the uh, Prindle display and the odometer and the, that, that output kind of is not, a lot of times doesn't work correctly, and that's some other parts of this board that's... Uh, it's pretty easily fixed from what I've seen. Uh, mine doesn't have that problem. I also didn't have any lights that were burned out. So I didn't touch any of that. I wanted to do as little as possible and just fix the gauges. If the other things were bad, then I'd either send it out or fix it myself. If it was somebody else's car, I probably wouldn't touch it. I'd probably just send it out. There's people who do this all the time and are really good at it and they give you a warning and everything else. But since it's mine, I don't want to spend an extra $150. It's about twenty thirty dollars in parts to fix this for all the stepper motors and it's fixed so hopefully I'm good for another 188,000 miles but if you have this problem with your uh, Chevy GMC series of trucks you know mid 2000s I hope this helps you out if you like the video subscribe below thanks for watching